In what quantities and what ratios should we be consuming the various fats that are available to us in everyday foods? I had someone asking me a question about fats and what types of fats we want to be consuming, whether it's polyunsaturated, monounsaturated, saturated, or other types, and what quantities and what from what food sources, and just sort of my whole take on that. Uh, I was trying to explain it in the comments, but obviously that got a bit too complicated and long for that, so that's why I wanted to make a video on it. And um, yeah, just to say, if you ever want to ask me a question, just post it, and I'll probably get to it in a Q and A. Just keep in mind, I don't get to every single question. And it should be sort of on the topic of health and longevity. I don't uh, address dis specific disease issues on my Q&A videos. Uh, you can always set up a phone consultation with me if you want to address something that might be going on with your life in terms of a personal health challenge. And we can look at strategies and lifestyle factors that could be contributing to that and also ways that we can change those to uh, improve that. So the best article or blog post that I've ever read is actually a uh, blog an article on a blog that it was done by Archivore, which you can read at the link below. And it was a article that was outlining the his rendition of, at first, just the basics on the different types of fats. And I'm not going to go into the detail of them. There's the main ones I've already mentioned, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, and saturated. If you want to know details, read more about them below. Um, but then there's also uh, trans fat, but there's also um, both natural and unnatural trans fats. The natural ones are healthy, such as conjugated linoleic acid, which is technically a trans fat, but it's in grass-fed beef, grass-fed dairy, and this is actually an anti uh, antioxidant that has anti-cancer properties and a number of other sort of um, beneficial qualities to it. So when we talk about trans fats being bad, that's generally the artificial ones created through heating and altering a polyunsaturated fat to make it more rigid and so it becomes more crystalline and that obviously messes up the inside the body and causes issues inflammation and other things um, so the big issue that most people get confused about is you know where do we get our essential fatty acids omega-3s and omega-6s and again the blog post I already agreed with this before reading it but we don't need to get massive amounts of these. These are essential, meaning that our body doesn't make them, and we definitely need some amount of them, but it's actually a very small amount. Um, we, If we look to our ancestral diet, what we evolved eating, that can give us an idea of how much of these we should be getting. We don't need to be consuming flax oil, tons of olive oil, tons of all these isolated oils on top of seeds and foods rich in these things, trying to get our omega-3s or trying to get omega-6s. Um, the one possible supplement you want, might want to consider if you're not consuming a lot of seafood, which might not be advisable considering the amount of toxicity that's in most types of seafood, unless you're specifically consuming just uh, the ones that are low in it. But uh, fish oil supplement, cod liver oil, krill oil, whatever um, you're most drawn to, that would be ideal having in your regimen. That gets you the long chain omega-3s. So there's three tiers of omega-3s. There's the ALA, which is a plant, generally seen as plant-based omega-3s. And then there's the longer chain, which is generally seen as animal-based. But of course, you can get the long chain from plant sources and you can get the uh, short chain from some animal sources. Without trying to get you too confused here, the amounts of these polyunsaturated fatty acids we need are fairly low, but in most conventional diets today, people are getting way too much omega-6, not enough omega-3, and a way to alter this ratio um, is to stop consuming those foods very high in omega-6s, which is going to be pretty much all seeds, with the exception of flax and chia seed, but we're not touching flax because it's way too high in phytoestrogens and other uh, not so great factors. But aside from that, all nuts and seeds even walnuts, which are said to be high in omega-3s, have higher omega-6s than they do have omega-3s. Um, probably the best ratio next after chia seed is hemp seed, which is about a 4 to 1 ratio. And actually, hemp seed is great because the omega-6, in a large part, that's in there, while it does have the oleic acid, which is the conventional omega-6 that people are getting too much of from grains, beans, nuts and seeds. And then the factory farm meats that have been consuming the grains, which then elevates the omega-6, uh, 
ratio to omega-3 in their flesh, which we then consume. So we want to bring that omega-6 level down, but again, in the hemp seed, it's, uh, there's an omega-6 fat that's GLA, which is ganolinoleic acid, which is uh, very anti-inflammatory and something that most people are deficient of. It's very high in breast milk, but you can get it in hemp seed and spirulina, so having those in your diet is not going to throw off the omega-6 balance drastically by any means. But uh, this blog post made a good point that you want to be getting anywhere from 2-3% to 3 of your calories, tops, from uh, polyunsaturated fats. Um, so this is going to look like if you're eating a sort of primal type diet, even a Weston Price type diet, any sort of diet, if it's based on animal foods with a lot of fresh, vibrant raw foods or cooked vegetables or fruits, etc., those foods generally have um, proper balances of these things. And we're talk if we're talking about animal foods, we're talking about pasture-raised animal foods. So they're eating the grass, which again brings that omega-6 into balance with the omega-3. And there's very low in those things. So, you know, your average steak is going to have, you know, that small 5% of its fats from polyunsaturated fats. The rest of that steak is largely uh, in equal portions, monounsaturated fat, and half of it is... Um, saturated fat. You look at pork that's been pasteurized. The large majority of it is half monounsaturated. Actually, in pork, it's even more monounsaturated than the saturated. And monounsaturated fat is actually the fat that both the anti-fat camp as well as the pro-fat camp agree on as being healthy. It's the only one that they agree on as being very healthy. The sort of pro-fat camp saying saturated fat is healthy and uh, polyunsaturated fat, well, it's necessary. It's so unstable that too much of it becomes inflammatory, like I was saying. The omega-6 is being too high, but also too much omega-3s is inflammatory. We don't need anywhere over 3 to 4% of our total calories coming from that. It's impossible to calculate that, but if you're just thinking, I'm not going to consume those foods that are super high in it, which is the nuts and seeds, the grains, the beans, um, and specifically the grains and beans are more altering your omega-6 ratio because they don't have enough omega-3s, and then the nuts and seeds are just very large, the composed of fats that they do throw that off as well. So the monounsaturated fat is said to be healthy because it raises HDL, which is the supposedly good cholesterol, or as if there's any other type of cholesterol. Um, and then they lower LDL, which the anti-fat camp thinks is a good thing, and the pro-fat camp is, um, doesn't feel that alters your risk of heart disease in any way. Um, so that's good, and then saturated fats elevate both LDL and HDL, so that's, again, seen as something that's not overly associated with heart disease, except higher HDL is good, um, but it's a very low density LDL that is connected with heart disease, which is not the same LDL that saturated fat and um, animal foods elevate. So again, coming to exact ratios, um, we have to look at our ancestral diet, we have to look at, um, you could look at Either of these two videos here, this one is the ancestral diet video I did that will give you a really solid scientific basis for um, the fact that humans evolved to consume a lot of animal foods, um, and this changed our physiology to need one that was based on a fat content that is similar to what you'd find in animal flesh. So having that high amount of saturated fat, which is an amazing fuel, our body stores fat as saturated fat. So how could saturated fat be toxic to the body or cause horrendous health problems if that's what our body naturally likes to store? Stores it in the, around the nerves has sat, have saturated fat. Body fat in terms of subcutaneous fat and then intermuscular fat is uh, something that is not what people want to have happen. But that's generally not going to happen unless you're consuming way too many calories or you're consuming way too many carbohydrates in combination with some fats. And it's going to be jacking that insulin up and uh, blood glucose, which is then driving into the cells and storing it as fat. So that's, again, not the ideal place we want to be. We don't want to be putting on excess weight, but just the fact that we have fat anywhere in our body, we don't have massively low body fat, but just knowing that the body makes its own saturated fat, and the body doesn't, isn't designed to kill itself, and saturated fat isn't actually what's found on the lining of arteries that are clogged, so there's no connection there with saturated fat and heart disease. And then this video here is uh, one of the other ones in the same series as this one that I reveal and talk about how cholesterol, saturated fat, and all these other things that have been demonized 
in mainstream nutrition are simply not bad for us. Uh, I explain in detail how, uh, with a lot of scientific references, how these things are fine for us, how a lot of the research uh, is biased and not done properly. So you can learn more about that there, and if you're sort of still skeptical about the health effects of animal foods on the human physiology. Then within saturated fat, there's longer chain saturated fats than there's sort of what they call medium chain saturated fats. And the longer ones are, again, the ones that are, we're talking about when we're talking about dairy uh, and as well as the uh, animal flesh. And then medium chain fats are found in dairy as well, but more so in the tropical palm oils, palm kernel oils, uh, coconut oil, and some other sources as well. But again, if you want to learn more about the specific functions of all these different fats, read that blog post below. It's excellent. Uh, pretty scientific minded, you can sort of uh, get past the jargon, the technical jargon, uh, by just reading carefully and you know what he's referring to when he, you see numbers and letters appearing <laughs> throughout some of the paragraphs. So it's true you can't get monounsaturated fat without getting some sort of polyunsaturated fat, but what we want to focus on, on is the foods that are very high in saturated and monounsaturated to varying degrees, whichever one's higher, and then have there's going to be some portion of that that's polyunsaturated fat. If it's a grass-fed animal food, it's going to have enough omega-3. If we're talking about a nut or seed, you're looking at a much higher ratio of polyunsaturated fats to the monounsaturated fats. Sometimes much higher, sometimes there's a lot of mono with this polyunsaturated and monounsaturated. Sometimes there's more saturated and more polyunsaturated. It gets confusing, but overall in those um, plant-based fat-rich foods, the polyunsaturated fats are much, much higher than that sort of 2-3% to 3 of calories that we're looking for. And again, the reason for that being is that the more unsaturated a fat is, so polyunsaturated fat has many unsaturated bonds, and that indicates that it's very unstable to heat, it's going to oxidize in your body if it's not being used, and because we only have a specific need for that 1 to 1 ratio of omega-6 to omega-3, and a lot of that omega-3 should be the DHA and EPA from the longer chain omega-3s. If we're getting excessive amounts of omega-3s or excessive amounts of omega-6 beyond that threshold, such as you would get from eating a lot of um, avocados, too many avocados, too many nuts and seeds, uh, too many pressed seed oils, basically any fat source except for maybe macadamia nut oil, um, which is mostly monounsaturated, and some other unique examples, uh, they're all going to have that high omega-6 content which adds to the burden of inflammatory qualities throughout the body. So the idea of a raw vegan high fat diet doesn't work for people because it uh, has that very inflammatory quality about it. And we just know from basic evolution that um, humans didn't evolve to eat that way. So it's important, just as this blogger was writing, that even if you don't agree that we need to be getting a large amount of our calories from fat, um, just dividing things into fats, carbs, and proteins is not specific enough as to the effects they have on their body. You could say, I'm on a high-fat diet, and that could mean you eat steak, eggs, bacon, and tons of animal foods, and practically nothing else, or it could mean that you eat green salads with avocados, olive oil, uh, nuts and seeds dehydrated and turned into crackers and sort of a diet that's all based on this but it's going to be very inflammatory and not sustainable for the long term. Then of course what I personally recommend is a diet that's well rounded. You have to find your own personal space of what works in terms of the ratio of carbohydrates to fats. So if you're someone who does work better on carbohydrates then have more potatoes and yams and if you're probably soaking and fermenting grains you might have a certain amount of those in there. Uh, but you're going to be going for organic uh, sources of these. And you don't want to be overdoing the grains because of, again, that omega-6 imbalance. And then some people do do better on the higher fat. In that case, you don't have as much of the starches, and all of your focus is on um, the animal foods as the source for your fuel. Of course, the starchy or carbohydrate-based diet could have the fruits in there as well, if that's something that works for you. Some people, it's like a spectrum of higher carb, higher fat, and most people are somewhere along there. The only thing that I say that doesn't work is the high-fat diet that's based on plant oils and fat-dominant plant foods like nuts and seeds. And of course, that doesn't mean you never eat nuts and seeds, I just want to say as well. They have their place. They are great condiments. You can think of them as condiments. Um, 
and especially with chia seeds, they're great for specific types of dishes. You can make great crackers with them. But in terms of the bulk of our calories, we want to be looking at the things that have the least impact of being inflammatory on the body, have the least impact of uh, causing things to go out of balance. And we really don't see people doing things in the long run on these sort of hybrid diets that were created within the last century and are just basically being experimented with to see how they, what effect they have on people. So if you like this video, subscribe, leave a comment below, favorite, like the video, and um, check out my other videos, of course, and let me know what you think, ask questions, and also check out the links below for ways that you can help support me through affiliate programs, which helps keep me putting out great videos and bringing you more great content on. That is a, has a scientific edge to it, because I firmly and strongly believe in uh, not just spouting some belief system, but having uh, a clear understanding of things from a logical side of things, but also from a personal experience, and also from the place of long-term experience I see in others who are uh, more longer-term teachers in the nutrition, lifestyle, and health fields. So with that, take care and embrace life without limits.